my name is Raina Renee and I have a story I would like to share with you guys today so stay tuned if you want to watch Today, um, I guess I just want to share my survival story with you guys from when I survived a horrible car accident, which led to my neck, my back, my foot, both my lungs collapsed, my arm was paralyzed, I had staples in my hair, I had glass all like on my booty, just it's still to this day glass inside of me. Okay, so in April, I don't know the exact date, probably like April 25th or 26th, something like that, of 2016, I was in a horrible accident. So I'm my mom in the car and I just saw a big ass bug. <laughs> land on my window i thought it was on the inside but it was running outside but we ain't finna pay that man we ain't even about to worry about that right now we ain't even finna worry about that <laughs> but anyways like i was saying so in april i was in a car accident and yeah it was bad but the thing is that i wasn't even driving i was asleep the whole time it happened and literally i was in no pain like i didn't feel no pain at all like i'm gonna get to what led the accident before i get to telling y'all like the exact date of the accident because it's just <laughs> but not nah, anyway like two days before my car accident i know i um ended up going to visit my sister and we had fun we had a lot of fun when I went to visit her. I know I ended up going out. We partied, whatever. I ended up having to drive about like five hours back home. So I drove five hours home. See, I'm trying to remember, so just be patient with me. <laughs> but not though, all I know is that I was hanging around the wrong people. I already was, and. I didn't care it's like I knew and seen all the signs but I didn't actually care at the moment it's like whatever I just wanted to be out just doing stuff whatever That's the day of my accident all I remember is me being asleep only yeah I just remember feeling my body like jerk like this and I woke up on the floor, like the passenger floor, floor, because again, I wasn't driving. <laughs> but yeah, I wasn't driving. So I ended up on the passenger floor. I just know I woke up and I'm looking around. I'm like, uh, what's going on? And I thought I was paralyzed, <laughs> for real. I already thought I was paralyzed. Because I couldn't get up. I couldn't move. I couldn't do nothing. And it's like. Not even. It seemed like right 30 seconds. If I'm not exaggerating. It felt like literally 30 seconds. Where the police pulled up. And was trying to help me get out the car. The person that was driving the car. Wasn't messed up at all. He got out the car came around to my side and said let's trade let's trade seats my man I'm like what let's trade seats what the fuck I can't even get up how are we gonna trade seats so I was stuck like literally stuck in the car and my side yeah, my doors and stuff was stuck, so I couldn't get out. I just remember the police officers. I remember the person I was with came around to my side of the car and tried to kick the windows out for me to get out. But obviously that didn't work, end up breaking the leg or whatever. Yeah. 
So right after that, the police pulled up. And I mean, yeah, I saw the police standing outside. He was asking me like, no, yeah, like he was asking me was I okay and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, no, I'm not okay. I don't know why I just say yeah, like no. Actually, take that back. I did lie and tell him I was okay because I was telling him that I'm able to get up and he was telling me to sit and I was just like, no, I'm able to get up. Like, can you just hold my hand? I can get up. And I tried to get up and oh my gosh, it couldn't. At that moment, I was like, wow, I'm really paralyzed. Like, I really thought I was paralyzed. And that was so scary. Just the feeling like, wow, I was just moving and now I'm stuck. I can't move. I literally can't move at all and it seemed like literally a blink of an eye the ambulance was out there like the fire department or whatever I know they had to use something whatever that machine was to pry my door open and all I remember was them snatching me out the car so I'm out the car and I'm just laying down on the thing we made it to the hospital in under five minutes and I'm so blessed that, like, I'm not blessed to have been in an accident, but I'm so blessed at the fact that, I'm sorry for background noise, there's just a lot of people out here, but yeah, I'm just really blessed for the fact that we were about a hospital, that's what I can say, yeah, I'm just happy that it was very close to a hospital, so they took me in, all I remember is being on the stretcher, so I remember being inside the hospital thing, and I was just like telling them, Oh no, I'm about to die, I'm about to die, I'm about to die. Lady, she was just like, No, no, you're not. No, you're not. I'm like, Yes, I am. That's how I just was feeling. And she was telling me I'm fine. I was laying there and I just had the urge to get up. I got up and then I know I, I started coughing up blood. And that's when they was like, Oh no, you have blood in your lungs or something like that. And now he said I had liquid and fluid in my lungs or something. So he told me that he was gonna have to, they got to drain it. I don't know what happened, but I was awake, right? <clears throat> like I was awake throughout this whole thing. As soon as it came time for them to have to put the tube in my lungs, for some reason, like at that particular moment, I fell asleep. <laughs> I was asleep, I didn't feel no pain, I didn't feel it. I woke up right after they was done and I remember they checked my other side and they said that they had to drain the fluid out of all that lung as well and for some reason again I dozed off and didn't feel that and then I just know I woke up surrounded by family I'm gonna insert pictures and videos and whatever but I woke up with family around me I'm not knowing the condition that I'm in not at all not at all like at this particular time i'm not knowing that all this stuff was wrong with me i had a neck brace on <laughs> and that was horrible i was sitting there i saw the reaction on my family i'm just like wow like i didn't know it was that bad until i put on my phone i seen myself <laughs> but um yeah i was messed up It'll be some pictures in there that you'll see how bad I was. But when that happened, it's like my life flashed before my eyes. Well, not at that particular time because, again, I was asleep. Yeah, like I said, I was asleep, but just the whole process of it afterwards, it was just like I kept blanking, blanking out, whatever. I don't remember nothing. It was just like, wow. And then again, like I said, my neck was broken. My back, both lungs clapped. So I had tubes in both lungs. Arm was paralyzed because with the accident, it was like, I stretched my neck. I like stretched my neck and it stretched my nerves and whatever. So, that was temporary. I was, <clears throat> they told me about that, but we kept looking like at my foot. My foot was so swollen, but it wasn't in any pain. I was not in no pain, no pain for my injuries, no pain at all. So, um, 
Yeah, like after they was looking at my foot, you kept touching it, it wasn't moving. My foot was so swollen and fat. I can't even describe it. Like I said, I'll show pictures. But he come back with the x-rays like, oh, your my heel was shattered. So I'm like, wow. Wow. So they end up doing surgery or whatever. But I was sitting in the car. I was so tired. So I was going through a lot. Like I was just so tired, so I couldn't drive. And I had the seat, like the seat belt was already snapped. I know it was stupid. I know it was dumb, but it was already snapped in my car. I was so used to getting out on it. You know what I'm saying? Like I wasn't thinking about no accident. Stupid, right? <laughs> but yeah. Um, the um seat belt was only like wrapped around my top part top half of my body so that protected me i guess i'm going through the windshield because yeah um ran into a building and a pole i forgot that <laughs> ran into a building and a pole yeah so instead of me flying out the window i didn't fly out the window i slid under Still, like I said, still to this day, it's still glass in me. I got a lot out, but it's still a little bit. And since the accident happened, it made me appreciate, like, I appreciate way more than I was caring about the wrong things, caring about just grinding, wanting to make some money and whatever, just, but that wasn't the stuff that was important. Cause again, I had signs to, this wasn't nobody like I was in a relationship with or nothing like that. But still, all the signs were there to stay away. Like, yeah. Yeah. Well, they was like in a rush to kind of like kick me out of the hospital. Not too much. I know I spent 10 days and I know I was going to say a rush, but I wasn't ready to leave. I had to force myself to walk, to take steps in there in order for them to release me. I had to learn. And so I forced myself. But guess what? I I was told it was going to take me like over a year to walk again, to heal, for therapy. Guess what? I started walking in less than two months. And I taught myself, yes, me, I taught myself how to walk. I didn't go to a doctor. I didn't do nothing. I was even taking out my stitches. But, but part of that swells because I didn't have, like, the proper transportation to take me around. I didn't, you know, really have to take me, drive me around to appointments. So I say, you know what, instead of me sitting around waiting, which is something I don't like to do, I got my ass up and forced myself to do better. It was hard. I had to walk, I had the, my foot was messed up. So I had to learn how to walk on my left foot. Well, my left leg, that's the only leg I was walking on. That leg was so buff and strong compared to this other leg. Like <laughs> this leg was looking like my arm and the other leg was so thick and muscular and strong, but it's okay. I was going up three flights of stairs with one leg. Like I was literally like running. <laughs> I could still to this day like run with one leg because it's still so strong but it was tough but thinking about it now I did it and I'm happy but yeah it was like <laughs> the neighbors used to hit it because I used to drag my stuff I used to be scared to be in the hallway because it used to be dark sometimes and I try to hurry up and go as fast as I can and I start crawling up the stairs and as I'm crawling like all you can hear is my walk up it just doof do do hitting the stairs and they're like uh -huh, no she's here and the rain is back <laughs> but yeah it's see funny i fell down the stairs once one time before going down the back stairs and i skipped a step or something like that and i ended up falling but it's okay the first time i was out it was me and my nephew we walked to the store the store is literally like across the street but it took so long and i thought i was ready Whew, i was not ready i had to call somebody to come pick me up because man woo, i yeah yeah I did it too fast. I was driving again on that foot. It was my right foot. I was driving again in like two months. I love Chicago. I was living in Chicago. I love Chicago and moved to Orlando. 
didn't have no family there, no nothing. Just got the fuck out of the good left. And, um, yeah, and I was driving back in. Like, yeah, I moved like two months after my accident. I love, because I wanted better. I wanted different. And so it's like, I left with a cast on, with a brace on, all no, got nothing. And you can't, I couldn't even walk fully, but I still, I taught myself. It was painful. Like, I guess I was learning and teaching and doing this to myself, like, way before it was my time. Because, um, because I used to feel like, I don't know, have you ever licked a battery as kids? Like, those D batteries or whatever. And, like, put your tongue on it, you could feel, like, the vibration, whatever. It just felt like. A whole bunch of vibration going down my spine because i yeah i stopped wearing my brace they told me to wear my brace for three months i was only wearing my brace for like a month and a half hard-headed i know but i ain't had time i couldn't wait like i i couldn't wait i, I couldn't wait sitting inside a house and depending and waiting on us oh it was so depressing so depressing doing that and it's like, I'm the type that wanna just get, I'm gonna get it done regardless. And that's motivation for you who's ever watching. Get it done regardless. Stop worrying about other people. Stop worrying about what help you got. Is somebody gonna help you? Somebody gonna help you do that? Like, no, just do it. Just do it. You can do it. You can do it. Again, doctor's orders. I was going to take over a year to learn therapy and heal with my foot. Doctor's orders. But again, within two months, not even two months, a month and a half, I was walking again and driving. And then I started running a few months, like, I'm saying total three to four months after my accident, I was able to run. It was scary taking my first step. It was so painful because my foot was like stuck going. <laughs> but yeah, my foot was stuck going down. So my foot was like that. And I had to force it to go back flat and to do stuff like that. Yeah. But I don't know. I'm just happy that I was able to survive that. I'm happy that I'm able to tell you my story. Well, one of my stories. I'm happy that you guys were listening to what I had to say and you watched my video. I love you for that and I'm so grateful and thankful. I love life. It's like the things that I used to care about, I do not care about no more. It's not worth it in the end. But like that yeah just to know like what happened like wow I feel so blessed well that's all and thank you so much again for watching and that's one of my survival stories Bye.